So now let's take a look at the mux. So the mux, um, we want to express the behavior of the mux in terms of a truth table as well. So first let's try to understand what a mux is. A mux, as we said, is a many to one transformation. In other words, a vending machine allows you to make a choice out of many and you can choose one out of many and the one that you choose is the one that is dispensed from the vending machine. So we often, um, though I do not use this notation in class, uh, the book uses a notation where it says, uh, typically it will say something like n to 1 and often we choose n so that it's a power of 2. So for example, it's some 2 to the k to 1 circuit. Um, and the reason is because we know that if I have 2 to the power of k choices, so here are my 2 to the k choices, and in this case I'm going to just make 4 choices. Now the 4 choices, when given to a multiplexer, I want only one of these choices to depending upon which one I choose I want only one of them to be dispensed or exiting the multiplexer this is a 4 to 1 multiplexer or more specifically 2 square to 1 multiplexer which tells us that we need two lines to to choose between these and we'll say we for convenience we'll put the the codes here so let's say my choices are w x y and z so we say that uh, w will be dispensed if my code here is 0 0 and i'm going to select this write these as the select lines and these are my choices and the select line is described by s so let's call this s1 and S naught where S1 S naught when it's 0 0 then I would dispense this when it's 0 1 I would have X be the choice that is dispensed and 1 0 Y would be the choice and 1 1 Z would be the choice so um, let's see if we can write the truth table for us again we haven't seen what the circuit inside is going to be but we can build the circuit once we know what the truth table is going to be so the truth table for this says that um, now notice that in this particular case we really have only one output as opposed to the decoder which has four outputs in this case and two inputs here we have one two three four four inputs plus two that is six inputs and one output so the way i'm going to write this uh, write this is i'm going to write all my like we write in a regular truth table i'm going to say these are my input choices and then i have my w x y and z and here is my output because remember the truth table always has all the inputs on the left side and the output on the right side. Now the way I'm going to write this truth table is um, take a couple of shortcuts because I don't want to write all all two to the six combinations. Um, instead I'm going to I'm going to compress some of them and I say if S1 S0 is 0 0 it doesn't matter what X is what Y is and what Z is all that matters if is if w is 0 I have to get a 0 out here now similarly if it is 0 0 and w is 1 it doesn't matter what these guys are this has to be a 1 in other words a 0 0 on my select line will give w whether it's a 0 or a 1 it's what gets gets to be the output if it's 0, it has to be 0. It has, if it's 1, it has to be 1. So similarly then, uh, selection of 0, 1 doesn't matter what W is, Y is, or Z is. If this is a 0, then I get a 0 here. And if for a 0, 1, this happens to be a 1, I get a 1 here. 
similarly if I have a 1 0 that's doesn't matter doesn't matter if this is a 0 I get a 0 and for a 1 0 if that's a 1 I get whatever the one is in here for example it's saying whatever w is whatever x is whatever y is and lastly if it's one one then it doesn't matter what these guys are this is going to be a zero as long as this is a zero and if it's one one doesn't matter what these guys are if it's a one it's going to be a one now in other words, the way I'm corresponding this and I'm saying that this is a Z and so on as if you notice this corresponds to this, this corresponds to this, this corresponds to this and this corresponds to this. So that's my truth table. Now how do I take this truth table and translate it into a logic circuit? Well, the way I'm going to do that is first I'm going to Right, I have a single output, so all I have is a bunch of rows. So I see what rows are relevant. I notice that this row is relevant because it has a 1. And I'm going to write that as, so uh, in terms of my circuit, I'm going to write that as out equals S1, S0, so that's S1 bar, S0 bar, followed by W, right? And then when I take this row, so I'm writing a logic expression here just to give you an idea so that I can then take this logic expression and convert it to a logic circuit. So then I say R, so my second high, uh, circle row tells me that S1 it says S1 bar, S0 and X and then my third circle row which is this guy right here corresponds to, so I'm going to write it down here, it's going to be S1, S0 bar Y plus this is the last row this, that corresponds to S1, S0, Z. So let's build the circuit for this. So I have S1, S0 as my inputs, right? And the other inputs are W. So in fact, let's do this. Let's not worry about drawing them like this, but we'll draw them in the form that we have described here. So we have our input W, input X, input Y and input Z and we have our other inputs on this side which are S1 and S0 and so my first this one says that I have to take S1 and W and S0 and the way I have to combine them is it's S1 is a not, not and this guy and they both all three of them go into a NAND gate and that's the output and then the second one says that I have a X which is this and then the other inputs are uh, S1 complement which means I bring this down here and do that and that's my S1 and then I have my Y which is going to go into another AND gate and this one gets the S1 uncomplemented and S0 complemented and this last one gets the Z as its input with S1 complement uncomplemented and S not uncomplemented. Now there's an R between all these that tells me that they have to be combined together in uh, R 
circuit. So that's my circuit that realizes my out. So this here then is the design of our mux. So this is the same as my circuit that said I have a two or four two one max so so what we've done accomplished in this uh, screencast is to see that we can derive the behavior of a max and the behavior of a decoder by understanding what their truth tables are